So the big question on this is the one and two, because as we, as you said, um, the number one and two for you shouldn't surprise anybody, Fabian Lysel and Mason Lowry, the two top prospects, which by the way, I will say a little surprise coming on Bruins beat this Monday, unless big news breaks, which in that case, you and I will have to do an episode. Um, I got Mason Lowry for like 30 minutes, 35 minutes. So it'll be, it's a nice fun interview on his life and childhood and what got him here and interest, interesting stuff. I didn't know how interesting it would, was going to be um, because again, I had looked over his stuff. I was like, oh, this should be like pretty cool. And it was like very cool. So uh, I think you guys will very much enjoy uh, the, the interview. So that was my little plug there for, for this. And so preview. Very good. Um, but who has the higher ceiling? Fabian Lysel or Mason Lorai? Because again, two different positions. So it's hard yeah. to tell. I mean, both very talented guys. I'll probably give the slight edge to Lorai in terms of, I think, when you look at how many guys are in the league that can, you know, replicate what he brings when he's on his game. Not a whole lot of guys that have that size and that playmaking ability um, that I think if you pencil them into a top four of an NHL decor, again, not a lot of comparables there. There's a lot of offensive minded defenseman but you look at a guy like Makai who's not the biggest guy or Adam Fox or anyone like that uh Lori at what is he six four now six four six mm-hmm. four uh very few guys knew that like who's a like John Carlson right that's the only guy I can think of that really is like you know John Carlson's six three and is obviously a very gifted guy in the offensive zone so if Laura can be a guy like that uh, again, I think that kind of sets him apart from even a guy like Lysel, who I really don't know who exactly the comparison for Lysel is. And that, it's one of those things, too, where I just want to see how he does this upcoming year, wherever he ends up. Right. Because if he's down in Providence and he's a point per game guy down there, then it's like, all right, this guy could be something special. But I think as some we talked about before with Lysel is kind of just keeping those expectations in check because he's got to sooner or later hit some bumps in the road. Um but I, I think he has the ceiling of a legit impact top six winger. But I think when you look at just their different skill sets and which one really brings more value, you do have a guy like Lori who you can pencil in of giving you 20 minutes a night, give you a 40 plus points and be a solid guy can run your power play, all those things. That's a great coup for a guy that when he got drafted, I think everyone was just scrolling through like Twitter being like, who is this? Who's this man? We don't know anything about this guy. So I'll give the edge to Laura, but that's not, you know, speaking ill of, of Lysel and what he brings. I think you saw, especially how we ended last year in the WHL, very, very talented prospect. See, the thing with Laura is he doesn't have to be the number one left shot defenseman anymore. I remember like, you know, when, before the Bruins got Hampus Lindholm, it was, they need a top four, they need a number one left shot defenseman. And everybody kind of went like, well, it's coming in Mason Laura. Now he can be the number two if you, you know, when he comes up, the expectations, the load is not as heavy uh, as it might have been just, you know, a year ago. I'm going to go with Lysel. I think a, a top six winger who you can pencil in for, and again, I'm not saying this is his first year, second year, but there are high expectations. If he can give you 70 points a year or somewhere around there, which like he easily could with his skill set, the way he gets to the net, his speed, his shiftiness, the ability to win one-on-one battles, like that's pretty valuable. That's really valuable. And obviously you've got David Pasternak there. You have Brad Martian, you have Taylor Hall. If he can suddenly be kind of the, the, the fourth winger of those, of the top six, that's pretty good. And suddenly you've got, you, you know, you have the ability to mix and match on the wings. And again, that's not to discount Jake DeBrusque, but it's hard to imagine Jake DeBrusque lasting long-term in the top six, unless he makes giant strides in his game this year, which he easily could. But again, I think a guy like Lysel with the point, you know, with, with that skill set, you have to think like sky's the limit there. Like I'm not, again, I'm everybody temper expectations for this year. You know, it's hard. It's hard to do that again, especially when you get drafted, everybody's like, well, that's the next David Pasternak. And it's like, no, it's a little different. Um, what's interesting is that maybe this is just my eyes, but there are times in transition when Lysel kind of looks like Phil Kessel in a good way. I mean, this in, in a good way, the way, you know, shot release and things like that. I could be wrong. People are going to pick that apart and be like, Evan's an idiot. You know, he doesn't know what he's watching. Um, but there are times I see it. And guess yeah. what? That's not a bad thing. That's not a bad very thing. good thing. I, I think another comparison, I think I heard a lot about Lysel. I think especially early on, he was drafted with Nikolai Ehlers, who rocks i think i yes. love nikolai healer so if they get a guy like him who is one of the more underrated players i think at the nhl uh, i think he'll be pretty happy he's yeah. <laughs> he's really good 
The good problem is both have very high ceilings and yes, both exactly to hit it. I think it's more realistic that Lorai hits his his ceiling. I think it's just his he's a defenseman. Um, it's a little. I mean, I know it's harder to adjust as a defenseman, but I don't know. I just feel like with his size, it's there. Whereas Lysel's had some issues with consistency in the past. So again, Lysel could maybe be a, more impactful, but it's also a better chance that he isn't as impactful. Yeah, as well, it's it's. Sense. I think the the floors easier to map out for Lorai. We're like, I think Lorai could be, I think he will be an everyday guy, but is he like a third pairing quarterback uh, of a power play, but like sheltered five on five minutes, or is he an ev- like all situation top four guy? Like yeah. that's kind of the variance with him. Why well, sell? You still have to see how he does in private. It's all those things, but the potential is, as you said, it's right there. Watch any of his film. Yeah. So, I mean, again, both are very good. And I mean, both put the Bruins above the other bad prospect teams. We're not 36th <laughs> anymore, Evan. 36th to 32nd, maybe, we'll say. Um, but it's going to be interesting to watch this year. 